Hello everybody, Disciple here with Overwatch Curios. So the development process for heroes in the game is as varied as the cast of playable heroes itself. Sometimes Blizzard sets out with concepts for a character with a certain playstyle, while other times a new hero takes off just based off of a visual concept that the team really really likes, with a particular playstyle of that hero being defined as the creation process continues. Now there are a few heroes that have fit this, but Soldier 76 definitely fits it the best as explained by Jeff Goodman. He says, it's different for every hero, but for Soldier 76, he was definitely a top-down approach. For those that might not know that terminology, it basically means we started with the flavor, story, and art side and built mechanics around it, like Winston, as opposed to bottom-up, which means starting with gameplay mechanics and building a character around them, like Farah. So for this video, we're going to look at the development and history of Soldier 76 and all of the changes and iterations he went through to see exactly what Soldier 76 could have been. Now, the original idea for Soldier 76 came from Blizzard's Chris Metzen, a longtime employee of Blizzard who is now retired. Some of you might recognize him as the guy who initially took the stage at the Overwatch reveal at BlizzCon of 2014. Basically, Metzen started with Blizzard as an artist and would work his way up to creative director, primarily with the Warcraft franchise. During the early 2000s, he was also working on a graphical novel of his own, which was set in 2010 in an era where a new American war had broken out. This novel focused on one particular character, Soldier 76. In Metzen's novel, Soldier 76 is a super soldier empowered by microchips implanted in his brain by the US military. These chips augment his strength, speed, and endurance, as well as those like him. Deployed on an assassination mission that goes awry, Soldier 76 becomes a severe amnesiac, living on the streets of South Africa for nearly 30 years. When he finally returns home to America, he faces this new civil war and has to figure out exactly who he stands with in the new war. As development continued on Overwatch in its early stages, Chris Metzen would pitch the idea of adding Soldier 76 as a hero to the world of Overwatch, which seemed like a perfect fit for the game world, and apparently he was very convincing. As Jeff Goodman continues to explain the history to us, he says, For 76, it really started with a pitch from Chris Metzen, and as you guys have seen by now, he is incredible at pitching things, so we were sold basically right away. From there, our lead concept artist Arnold Tseng, Metzen, and our art director Bill Petrus worked together to finalize a character concept while we went to work thinking about what he could, should do. At this point, we had already been thinking about adding more of a normal rifle guy, so we started with that idea and went from there. Some characters take a lot of iteration as we're constantly swapping abilities and trying different things. For example, it's a common internal joke about Bastion's ult. As you guys have seen, his ult is different than it was at BlizzCon, but what you didn't see was how many ults he went through between then and now as we tried new things. He was firing a volley of grenades, flying around in the air like a helicopter, and even firing through walls at one point. Luckily, 76 didn't have too many problems, and we all really liked him pretty much right away. The only real thing that changed was his heal, which went from a self-only heal syringe to the ground-based one he has now. So, Soldier 76 used to have a self-heal, and when you look at the development timeline, it's very likely that this ability would then be transferred to Roadhog, who came after 76 in development. If the heal was more powerful than the current iteration of 76's healing field, then this self-heal definitely would have been a massive headache for the team to figure out how to adequately balance. Self-sustaining characters can be pretty highly problematic because the damage dealt to survivability balance can make for an extremely hard to handle mechanic. Now, most of the early art of Metzen 76 depicts him wielding a gun in each hand, as opposed to the larger assault rifle that he wields today. It's possible that at first, 76 played almost like a Sombra does today, a highly mobile character with self-sustain, focusing on getting in and dealing damage quickly, then escaping. The run-and-gun playstyle is a classic trope of shooters, but the concept of 76 messed perfectly with Blizzard's desire to add more of a classical FPS character to the Overwatch roster with good, sustainable, reliable damage. Looking to add that rifle guy who focused on mobility and an accurate long-range weapon, 76 quickly became the classic soldier trope. However, he wasn't initially conceived as the former leader of Overwatch. The team would later go on to decide that this character would serve more purpose than just providing an easy point of access for new players or players from other games in the shooter genre. During his pitch of Soldier 76, Metzen would sell the character as a sort of fulcrum for the story behind the game world, with 76 himself being this visage of what Overwatch was. 
However, the designers wanted to drastically change his image from that of the original statue of Jack Morrison shown in the announcement trailer of 2014. As opposed to this shining beacon of light that the world adored, 76 now would have sacrificed his identity and morals to separate from the defunct Overwatch. Because of this, the team wanted to update the ski mask design of Metzen's original 76 concept to make it fit with the more futuristic world of Overwatch while still really keeping it all in a mask. He was instead given his visor, which according to Jeff was a concept that the team had planned from early on. The design to alter 76 visually was made so that the development team could really convey the changes he had gone through over the years, particularly in his actions and perception of the world, and not so much his age or current occupation. If Morrison was to be the focal point of the history of Overwatch, his fall from grace needed to have some obvious visual changes to denote how things had changed him in the years since. The rest of Soldier 76's costume design still holds a really strong resemblance to Metzen's original design of the character. The racer style jacket with a red, white, and blue theme, as well as the embroidery of 76 on the back of his jacket, remain largely unchanged. Other than the changes made to his choice of weapons and the healing mechanic, Jeff says that 76 remained largely unchanged throughout production, due to the focus the team had on the character they wanted to produce. The greatest difference in the two concepts, and the biggest change in the story of 76, is where exactly he stood. Upon returning to America, the original 76 struggled to know for which side he would initially fight for, but conceptually still stopped justice, whereas today's iteration of 76 focuses a lot more on vengeance. While 76 still has personal vendettas, predominantly with Reaper, he seeks to make sure Overwatch doesn't return. Spurned by the downfall and the separation of his organization, his views of justice are pretty skewed, and he doesn't necessarily fight for good, more his own version of it. This is presented really well in the scene from Hero, where Soldier 76 has to decide whether to protect the girl from the grenade or to chase down the enemies, and the old Jack Morrison likely would have jumped onto the grenade without a second's thought or defended the girl with any means necessary, but the fact that this 76 was thinking about chasing them down for vengeance shows that he's definitely not exactly the golden boy he used to be. So there we have it, from the original concept of a scientifically enhanced hero abandoned in South Africa to the final product of another enhanced soldier in a new world with a new story. Soldier 76 has actually been one of Overwatch's most stable heroes from conception to completion. However, two very specific changes have definitely altered his playstyle and changed what he could have been. From a self-sustaining running gunner to a more centralized long-range skirmisher who focuses on playing tight with his team, the vigilante Jack Morrison, the former leader of Overwatch, has turned to a lawless life pursuing only his own personal goals and vendettas. So what do you all think? Would you rather play the Vigilante 76, or does the world of Overwatch need that centralized commander who stands for everything good like Morrison did previously? What exactly could it mean for the game's story if instead of Winston, it were 76 trying to reunite the forces of Overwatch to once again defend the world? Also, if you're new around here, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can keep up to date with all of our newest content. And until next time, peace.